Thank you very much for tuning in. So this is uh, Jakob Ingebrigtsen. This is quite fresh. Uh, he's going for the two mile world record. We're going to see how he does that. The race has just started as a Paris the Paris uh, Diamond League and the current world record is 7.58 set in the 90s. Let's see how he does. He's the, I suppose he's the Sebastian Coe of modern times or the Steve Ovetta of modern times, you know, the really sort of talented European athlete who is just, you know, beating everybody. The only really person, the, the only race of any note that he's lost recently would be to Jake Whiteman in the World Championships, I think, last year. Possibly he was a little bit off form, losing to Jake. But apart from that, he's been winning absolutely everything. And the only thing he's not been doing really for an athlete who's winning so many races by such huge margins is uh, world records. I don't believe at this point he's got a world record, under, uh, world record under his belt. So this would be a good one to start off with. 7.58. If you think back to the eight, to the 70s, 1978, Steve Ovette beat Henry Renault in that uh, famous race. Not that it was a world record attempt as such, it just turned into a world record. It was about 8 minutes 12, 8 minutes 13, I think. Was it about that time? Or was it faster? Sorry about that. I think it was that time. And obviously it's come down since then. Distance is not often run. And I'm not even sure that it's considered a world record, rather a world best. I'm not sure. If you're watching, you could correct me if that happens to be the case. So, um, Jakob's speciality, really, he's a miler. He's dominated the scene for the last two or three years. He's the Olympic champion. He's run, I think, around 328 for 1500. And I think he's run around 346. I'm not sure whether he broke Steve Cram's world record. Um, I've heard or read somewhere that he was just outside it. So he's started very young, I understand. I was reading about him. He started even younger than Cohen Ovet. I think from the age of about six or seven, he was like running, you know, 10 miles and he was going to um, club meetings and doing interval training and everything. And he started very young and obviously he was formidable from an early age. And the younger you start, the sooner you reach top level. And he was running unbelievable times, I think. I f he first came to my attention when he ran, I think, about 3.31 at the age of, what was it, 17 or something like that, uh, you know, or 18 years old. It was young, and I thought he's run virtually as fast as Steve Ovet ever ran, even at his absolute peak. And he's only 17, 18 years old. So he's obviously going to be a star. And... He's got his work cut out, breaking those 1500 and mile world records from the 90s. Um, that's going to be tough. Running 326 for 1500 is going to be is going to be very tough, and running 343.5 or whatever it is for the mile. Sorry, 340 is it 343? El Garuja's world record. That's going to be tough as well, and he may well not manage that, but. Let's see how he does with this world record. So, I mean, if he can break the two mile world record, it makes it would make me think that he could move up to 5,000 meters if he's got, if he's got that stamina. I mean, Ovet was a good, you know, he had a good range, but you know, he sort of possibly could have managed at his absolute best, maybe about 13, 15 for, for 5,000 meters. So, I mean, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't in the sort of absolute top league at 5,000 meters. But I think maybe Ingebrigtsen, if he proves himself and breaks this world record, he might well, he might well, um, I don't know, once he's achieved what he wants at 1,500, he might well step up to 5,000 and Although, of course, we've got absolutely outstanding world record at 5,000 meters as well. Isn't it something like uh, 12 minutes, 20 something, something ridiculous like that. When Moorcraft ran 13 minutes, people were saying, oh, that won't be broken for 10, 15, 20 years. And the Wheater broke it. And then, of course, it tumbled 
I mean, Mofara, I believe, has run well, well under 13 minutes. So times have changed a lot. Um, records have improved to almost ridiculous levels. But I think the fact that Inge Britson's best for 1500 is around about 13, um, 328 or so. You know, I mean, for me, if you add a couple of seconds to that, it kind of puts him in the same sort of um, time bracket, really, as Cohen Ovet because and Cram, because with the better tracks they've got these days and they've got the light wave to help them along, better shoes and everything, I would have thought that that would be worth maybe a couple of seconds over a mile to a runner from the sort of 70s or 80s. Not to take anything away from him. I mean, he's the best. Undisputed, he is the best. There's nobody, at least in the 80s, we had Ko Kram and Ovet who were fighting over who was the best. And now we've just got Ingebrigtsen, who is sort of undisputed the best. So he's got two laps to go and he's gone through in six minutes. Mathematics would tell you that if he runs uh, 158, 800 meters for the last 800, he will break the world record. He is, where's that light wave? It's just trailing behind him. So he's up, he's up on the schedule marginally. I didn't think the pacemaker did a particularly good job here. Uh, I wouldn't really call him a, it's, it seems a bit strange having a pacemaker when you've got this light wave technology, but I would think that he should have kept closer to Ingebrigtsen to help him out. Uh, with the slip streaming, but he didn't. There was about sort of seven, eight meters in front, and it wouldn't have really done him much good. That's just a quibble, though. He's got superb physique. He very much looks like uh, a Premier League footballer. If you look at the Premier League now in, in England, you'll see that all the footballers have got Inge Britson's physique. Back in the 70s, you would get little players like Archie Gemmel and Billy Bremner, etc. Little guys. You don't see that anymore. The game is just so physical now, and you've got to be so fast and strong. Um, players of that stature just wouldn't live with today's footballers. And it looks to me like the same as happening with athletics, the, the stature of the, the physical, the physique of the, the runners. I mean, Ingebrigtsen's quite... I mean, Ko and Ovet were very, very slim. I mean, very, very, you know, there was hardly anything to them. But Ingebrigtsen's all muscle. Look at him go. So let's see if he can do this. He's really, he's really sprinting. He's got a fantastic finish here. He looks strong. He's chasing 758. It looks to me like he's way ahead of that. Yep, 754. There it is. He's absolutely shattered it. That's got to be the biggest. He's knocked four seconds off. Okay, so, I mean, Moorcroft knocked five seconds off the 5k world record so it's that kind of stature of performance he's absolutely shattered it wpb yeah okay well that's it then guys um i really enjoyed that i'm really obviously i am impressed with ingebrigtsen and um what can i say he's an absolutely phenomenal athlete and i do hope that he can take the 1500 and mile world record but uh he's probably you know, it's probably a bit too much, but that was an unbelievable performance and I would love to see him take on the 3000 meter world record and maybe even eventually 5000 meters. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll upload this now. I look forward to your comments. Bye for now.